What's going on guys? My name is Brian, also known as that journaling guy. And today I am here to show you my fountain pen collection. And I thought it'd be really fun because as of now, it's been two years, about two years that I've been collecting my fountain pens and it's not a huge collection. Okay. So before you start getting any ideas, it's not massive, but little by little, you know, we're going to start getting some more pens and I thought it'd be really cool to just talk to you about my pens and it's total value so far as of 2023 all right so let's start from the beginning let's start about my first ever fountain pen twisby diamond al 580 this one specifically and i remember when i first got it it was 60 dollars. okay and i was a college student and i remember thinking to myself i cannot get myself to spend $60 on a fountain pen. I can't get myself to spend $60 on a pen, period. It seemed unreasonable, it seemed dumb. Like, why would anybody do this? And the biggest reason, like my biggest inspiration behind getting a fountain pen in general was an Instagram page, okay? And I'm gonna put up some of his pictures right now and here, here, and here. Jose Naranja was his name, or is his name, he's still a very, like active user on Instagram and he posts his little journal where he has the most detailed drawings and notes you could ever imagine. Okay, and I loved his handwriting and everything seemed so uniform and I was jealous and I was impressed and I was excited and I remember he had one picture where he showed off this specific pen. I was like, I'm going to track this down. I scrolled through the comments wondering if anybody was gonna ask what the pen was and eventually I found it. It was the Twisby Diamond, and I got this in the extra fine point. I didn't know anything about nibs. I didn't know anything about um, companies for fountain pens. I was like, I want to do it like him. I'm going to do it like him. So I bought my first Twisby. And honestly, I treated this like it was the most valuable thing in the planet. I would only take it out during certain occasions. I wouldn't journal with it all the time. And even then, it was super scratchy. Um, until like maybe last year when I finally filed it down, but it was super scratchy. It was kind of annoying to use a little bit. The ink was everywhere. It was overall not the best process. So I didn't use it too much and it would be probably another year and a half until I got into fountain pens again. But the reason I got into fountain pens is mostly because it felt like it was a natural progression of my stationary journey in general. It felt like, you know, it, it feels like you go like this. It goes notebooks, markers, pens, um, washi tape, stickers, and then finally you get to like the final boss and it's fountain pens. And then you go into the rabbit hole that is fountain pens and you realize there's so much to learn. There's so many nuances and that's what happened. I ended up just kind of going through the motions of what the stationary journey is and I ended up in fountain pens. And now I'm obsessed. To this day, it's still one of my favorite hobbies. It's still one of the coolest things to collect. And it's one of my favorite things to do is write with my fountain pens. It's one of the coolest things to do in my opinion. So at the beginning of my pen collecting journey, I just started buying a bunch of pens. Okay, because I knew that if I wanted to find something that I like, I needed to buy a bunch and try them out and figure out what I wanted in a pen. And it took me a little while. I'm going to be honest. It took me like six months and probably like 10 pens to finally decide, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I like in a writing experience, in a writing pencil or in a writing fountain pen. This is what I enjoy. And I'm going to show you the first probably five pens that I bought that I felt gave me the broadest range right? The broadest range in um, fountain pen experiences, right? So this was my first luxury pen that I bought, essentially. This one was the, it was my Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo in pink, okay? I don't, if you haven't been part of the channel or watched the streams very much, I have an objective, okay? My objective is to collect the most amount of pink fountain pens than anybody on the planet. I wanna have all the pink fountain pens of all shapes and sizes and brands. That That's the goal. You see a pink fountain pen, it's for me. And it started off with this one, okay? The, the vanishing point. Now, if you know anything about the Decimo, which I didn't, is that first of all, Pilot's Extra Fine are very fine, 
okay, it's a tiny little nib, okay? Because the extra fine on the diamond, on the Twisby diamond, is very different from the extra fine on the Decimo. There's a difference, okay? There's a difference to that. I didn't realize there was a difference. So I bought this, you know, ha having my first luxury pen, and I was so extremely disappointed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was disappointed in everything about this pen at first. I was like, oh, it felt super scratchy. The lines were super thin. I didn't really enjoy the experience. So right off the bat, I was like, okay, extra fine points might not be the moves for me. So this one was one of the first ones. And it was a relatively expensive experience, like first pen to get into um, collecting. I'm not gonna lie. The second pen that I bought, which funny enough was another relatively expensive pen, um, was the Lamy 2000. Okay. This pen, I didn't like the ergonomics of it. It felt chunky and, you know, in my hand, it kept slipping. I have sweaty hands. Okay. And you'll see that as a reoccurring theme as we go through my pens, but it, it's not great to hold, okay? I don't know if you see this in, in the front, okay? It's just kind of a slab of metal, right? And you're, you're, if the more you write, if you're writing for a long time, your fingers start to slide down and there's really no place to hold it and it's kind of annoying, but it writes so beautifully. It was so smooth. It was thick lines. It was beautiful. I loved the writing experience with this pen. It was, it was amazing, okay? I was like, okay, maybe I do like extra fine. And that's when my Twitch chat started to tell me about the difference in extra fine with Japanese companies and German companies and American companies. I was like, I didn't, I didn't know all this, there's so much. But anyway, this one was my second purchase and I loved it. I did, I used it very often. It was one of my favorite, even though the pen itself might not have been one of my all time favorites, like the design, it is rather simplistic. It's nice, it's a workhorse, I enjoyed it. So let's move on. Okay, now <laughs> my chat goes crazy. The people I talk to in the pen community, they're like, listen, you need to get this pen. If you're getting pens, you need to try this out. Everybody swears by this pen and I don't know why, okay? I'm a hater. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm a hater, okay? I'm an artist loft hater and I'm a this pen hater. All right, we'll get it out of the way now. We'll just do it. The Pilot Kakuno, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I hate it. I hate this pen. I hate this pen with a burning passion. Okay. And this is really the introductory pen that people usually recommend to people who are looking into fountain pens. They're like, you should just get a pilot Kakuno. It's a relative, it's a relatively inexpensive entry point. They're like, it's such a good experience. You know, we do I hated this. I hated this with all my heart. <laughs> And I still do to this day. It's not fun. The little smiley face on the nib is dumb. I, if you tell me other, I don't care. I don't like it. I'm a hater, all right? We hate Pilot Kakunos here, but it is pink, so I'm gonna keep it. And maybe if I am dying and I'm the last man on earth and I only have this to write with, I'll use this. This next pen was actually sent to me by a viewer uh, who watches my Twitch channel and I appreciate it very much. It was very cool. This is the Pilot Metropolitan, okay? Again, a relatively very inexpensive pen, but I will swear by this, okay? Until the day I die. This, this pen is godly. It's amazing. This, this is the pen that I gift people, okay? This and the, the Twisby Eco, these are the two pens that I gift people when I tell them I'm into fountain pens and they, they tell me, oh, I wanna get into fountain pens. What two pens do I recommend? This, the Pilot Metropolitan. Dude, this is such a fun pen to use. All right, it writes so smooth. It doesn't feel cheap. It has like an aluminum body. It's only like 17 to $25, depending on the Pilot Metropolitan like style that you get, but this is just the black one. And I ended up buying another one, like a blue one, because I loved it so much. And one is a fine point and one is a medium. And I use them for different things. Like one's for trying out different inks. The other one's for everything, okay? I literally carry it everywhere with me and I, I use it to draw, I use it to, to do everything, right? But the Pilot Metropolitan was like my fourth or fifth pen, and it's absolutely one of my favorite. Okay. And then the last pen that I bought to really explore and kind of understand my needs as a fountain pen user was the Lamy Safari. Okay. And a lot of people will swear by this pen. 
they will swear and they will tell you it's one of the best pens on the planet. And again, it was just one of those pens that felt really overhyped to me. You know, I'm gonna be honest. It just, it felt a little overhyped. It's plastic. And I know it's like made of the plastic that Lego's made out of actually. So they're really durable, but I don't love it. It's not that fun of an experience. And like one of the things that I learned for, throughout these pens was that I like good builds. Like I like the, the build of a fountain pen is really important to me. I don't like plastic. I like metal. I like the weight behind it. Again, it all comes down to preference when picking your fountain pen. So it's really important. But the Lamy Safari was the last of the five that I bought consecutively. I'm talking about like within a few weeks of each other to kind of expand my horizons. At this point, I kind of have an idea of what kind of fountain pens I enjoy. And I start deciding on a grail pen, okay? If you don't know what a grail pen, it's essentially like a pen that you go after that's kind of expensive and it's like your trophy pen. It's your goal, it's your lifetime goal. You get this grail pen and it's one of your all-time favorites and like you're looking every for it. It's, you know, it's the experience. A grail pen is something to be really excited for. And I would, I would call it the goal of your pen collecting hobby, okay? I decided pretty early on that my grail pen was going to be the Visconti Van Gogh Orchards and Blossom pen, okay? It was a, a rose gold um, fountain pen. And it was relatively expensive, um, but I had planned to go um, get this pen on my trip to New York. So if you don't know, I have a video on my channel where I highlighted the best stationery stores in New York City. And my goal was to get this pen on that trip, which I did. And it's right here. Honestly, this was the worst experience I have ever had with a fountain pen. This was a disaster. It was my most expensive and I thought things just got easier with with time or with money. And I thought the more expensive a pen is, the better it was gonna be. This is where I kind of learned about the law of diminishing returns with fountain pens. It's not true. The more expensive the pen does not equal the better writing experience in general. And my experience in general with this pen was horrible. It was horrible. It genuinely was. Like. I f this is the rose gold nib, okay? But it didn't come with that. When I bought it, it was like the medium gold and I talked to the guy and he's like, no, it comes like that. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I, so I ended up buying it anyway. I ended up hating it and it was leaking. So I returned the nib. They returned another one in fine that was still gold. I was like, no, I, I wanted the rose gold. So I sent it back again and they finally sent the rose gold and it ended up being super scratchy and leaky and like it, it, it skipped so much. I could not get the ink to flow properly through this pen. I ended up taking it to a Nibmeister at the DC show and he fixed it for me. But even then I just got like a bad taste with this pen. All right, it, it just left the bad taste. So I ended up just taking out the ink and it just sits there. But it's, it's really nice to look at, it's beautiful. I just don't use it as much as I thought I was gonna use it. So, um, there's, there's that, <laughs> it's not, that was my story with my grail pen. And overall, I, I have a new grail pen and I will tell you guys about it when I get it. Now, as time went on, okay, I started spending a little bit more money than regular pens, right? My most expensive fountain pen in my collection right now is... Dun, 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 bam, bam. This. My most expensive pen is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim um, Winter Rain. And this was my first Sailor Pro Gear. It was my first Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And it has a two tone gold nib. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this was worth it. This was worth it. This pen was my favorite for a very long time. I absolutely loved the way it wrote. It, it was like beautiful. It was consistent. It felt amazing. It was smooth. It was thin. It wasn't, there was nothing wrong with it until I broke it. 
I did. I broke my most expensive pen on accident. Before I get into my top five pens, I want to talk about the other three reasons and on why I use fountain pens. Number two is my writing experience, okay? I feel like there's a lot of intentionality behind using fountain pens. It really causes you to slow down and think about where you're going to write next, especially if you try writing with a fountain pen for more than 30 minutes, you'll realize how tired you're going to get. You're gonna get exhausted so you have to think carefully you become a wordsmith you got to think carefully of what you want to write down but it's really a time of reflection and you just start to self-evaluate a lot more when you use fountain pens in my opinion at least if you're journaling if you're doing other stuff with it then you're fine but at least in terms of journaling it's caused me to be a lot more intentional with my writing and my thoughts the last reason uh on why i use fountain pens is the longevity it's an investment okay it, it, they last a really long time there. I know a lot of them are expensive, but some of these pens have lifetime guarantees. Like they're meant to last you the rest of your life. People use them for decades. They pass them on from generation to generation. I don't mind spending the amount of money because hopefully my kids get to get the same amount of enjoyment that I do from these pens. So it's not really a problem for me when I see like a high price point on these pens because I know I'm not gonna be the only one who enjoys them. But in general, the enjoyment that I get out of these pens makes the value worth it anyway. It's, it's fun. It makes me excited to write. It makes me excited to create with these tools. And I think an artist should have tools that makes them excited to do art, right? I'm not calling my journaling an art, but for me, it's a really important process in my life. So something that facilitates that and makes me excited to do it more often is really valuable in my life. Now, my top five pens, okay, ever out of my collection are these five. We got the Twisby Diamond 580 Mini, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Snow Moon Sky, the Diplomat Traveler in Flame Finish, the Pilot Metropolitan, the Caveco Sport. Those are my top five pens. And I literally have them inked and on my desk at all times. My top five worst pens ever, okay, in the history of my pen collecting so far <clears throat> is, I seem like a hater, my Visconti Van Gogh Orchard of Blossom, Ritma, my Lamy Studio Blue, the Pilot Kakuno, and my Franklin Conklin Durograph. Those are my top five worst pens. I hate those pens. I don't Honestly, I should probably trade them, but I just like having the amount of pens that I know is probably not a good idea because they're just doing, you know, sitting there doing nothing, but I could probably gift them and somebody will enjoy them. Welp, that is my entire pen collection and it's total worth as of right now. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. I'd love to know what your top five pens are or what pens you recommend I should get because the collection never stops. We're going to keep going. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.